Hey everybody, I've got a special announcement before we get started with today's episode. I want to let you know about a special masterclass I'm hosting. It's called How to Talk with Our Kids About Holiness. We're going to take on some special topics like discussing modesty, media, gender distinction, and all these important topics we want to dig into. We'll be joined by special guests Tim and Stacy Gaddy. It's going to be an amazing time. Please join us. It'll start April 30th on Zoom. You can click on the link in the show notes to get more, more details, and we hope to see you there. Welcome back to another episode of the Holiness Podcast, where we believe when discipleship is our pursuit, our priority, then wholeness and holiness naturally follow. And I'm so excited today to have with us Sunitha Carpenter. Yes, Welcome I'm so today. excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Looking absolutely. I was thinking back today, I remember... Oh man, it's been two, three years ago, maybe. We did a video together talking about with teachers how to help youth get more engaged in thinking about missions. That's right. If you remember that, that's been a while back. So somewhere floating around in YouTube, we got a video out there. The OG, the OG team talking about that. Yeah, I was very passionate about missions. I still am, still love missions. But absolutely, absolutely. So some folks probably already know you. They've been on mission trips in the past with you and everything. But tell us a little bit about you and what you're up to these days. Okay. Um, So, yes, I stepped out of AYC in the end of 2022, I think. Then I got the neat opportunity to become admin pastor at the sanctuary here in St. Louis. Never, ever saw that coming (laughs) from a million miles away. I still sometimes wake up in the morning like, Lord, this is real. (laughs) You know, so that's a cool um, thing that God has given me the opportunity to work in, and he's working on me in that as well. And I got married in 2023. So that's a whole new world too. So it's like new worlds everywhere. Nothing is the same, but it's great. It really is. So that's what's kind of happening in life right now in ministry, I would say. That's so great. Well, I'm blessed to get to know you from attending the same church and blessed by your ministry there. Um, And so glad you're here for this conversation because we've been on this journey with this podcast. This is season three, and we've been talking about just this discipleship journey, growing close to God. And of course, you know, the title, Holiness, we believe we become whole as we get closer to God and understand our purpose. But this whole process Mm, of growing closer to God Obviously, prayer is is one of the ways yes. that we do that. Um, and so I guess maybe let me just start by saying, okay. what I'm kind of asking everybody, what's your right. kind of working definition of prayer? What does that mean to you, mm. look like to you? So maybe just start us there. Okay. So I think when I was younger, let me start there. Prayer was this elusive thing yeah. to me. I didn't really know what it was. It was something that we said the beginning of service over dinner or, you know, like whatever that was, I never really knew the depth of it. Right. So I just Mm -hmm. kind of thought it was a taskless item that we just checked off because that's what we're supposed to do. And as I grew up in church and in just kind of dove in, it took me a while to really grasp it, probably because I just didn't really know how to dig in and figure it out. But to me, what prayer is, is a relationship and a conversation with God. And whenever I approached it that way, it was something that I was excited to wake up in the morning and do. It wasn't like, okay, God, here's my list. I just need to tell you all the things and deuces. I'll see you later. It was more of like, let's talk about these things. I want to hear your perspective. It was just this conversation. And then it built a relationship because I didn't know what that looked like. But so I would say my definition has probably evolved over the years. And I'm so thankful that God has taken me on that journey to see where it's at for me. That definition is for me now. Still growing, always moving closer. But I love that because I think sometimes what people do, maybe I'm speaking for myself, is we set the bar so high with Mm -hmm. prayer. And that's, I think what you're meaning by that elusive thing. And it's just like, how do we pray? Because you know, if you are you praying enough? Well, you can't ever really just say right, yes. Can right. you? So it almost feels like, like you said, I love that word elusive. Like, how, how do we get there? Because I'm not ever sure that I'm really like, I got it. Check. I'm yes. doing this. We're done. Yeah. And so that's interesting about this, this idea of it, when it's connected to the relationship, mm-hmm. though, we never, I don't think anybody's sitting down and thinking about a friend or spouse and going, wow, did I talk to them enough today? Right. They're probably right. not asking that question, but as they grow close to that person, naturally they're talking to each other. Mm-hmm. More. And throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, my husband, just as an example, my husband and I will talk in the morning yeah. and then throughout the day, if I have a question or something, I'll call him up and we'll talk about it or whatnot. And the same with way with God, there's multiple, like, 
yes, in the morning I'll wake up and I'll talk to him. And that's my extensive, you know, sure. talking. But throughout the day, if something's like hit me in the face or I'm like, oh, Jesus, I need you to help me with this. I need your peace or I need this. And I have that short conversation then. But it's throughout the day that yeah. you just, it's a continual conversation. And he speaks continually too. So it, it is. It's that relationship building for sure. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, one of the things I would love you to share a little bit with the viewers and listeners, um, you preached at our church recently. You talked about that secret place. Yeah. We we know there's that verse and we kind of get it. But, you know, in this conversation about, you know, prayer can sometimes turn into a checklist if we're not yeah. careful. Mm -hmm. Maybe share with us a little bit about your journey and, and your passion to see people maybe reimagine prayer. Yeah. So I would say the first part of that, I think that the message that God gave me a couple months ago, and then I preached it a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it's something that was just stirring and it set and it was heavy. And he asked me to kind of dig it out. It even helped my prayer life because it was something that I had went through. Right. And so we always minister yeah. from our pain or our experience. Right. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. But, um, one of the things was that he asked me to dig out was the secret place. And in Psalms 91, it talks about the secret place of the Most High. If you abide in it, and it's just like list all of these things that the secret place is. And then if you even dig into that, and this is my analytical brain, but like you just keep digging into that into scripture, you find out that the secret place is where God is. And then all of these things happen in the secret yeah. place. So it really challenged me to find out, okay, God, you say in your word, and I believe that your word is 100% true, that if I find out where you're at or if I dwell with you, you will um, hide me in the shadow. Like you'll you'll protect me. Yeah. You'll keep me from false words. You'll reveal things to me, revelation. You will show me the deep things. You will continue to mold and shape me and mm -hmm. all of these things. And so I think what that message did, and there were so many different nuances or layers to that message. But I think what that message did for me was expand even more what prayer and that relationship with God really looks like. It's not just me and him and it's just this, but it can be me and people and him and people. And yeah. like, there's just so many different areas that yeah. it expanded to by me digging into what that secret place looked like and how to get there. Yeah. And you were really vulnerable in that message to talk a little bit about your journey, even as a young adult. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I get that, and you know, you, we really shared how for young adults, you have yes. to be sure to develop, oh, but yes. that applies to all of us. Absolutely. Right. And any of us can fall into just maybe not taking advantage of everything in prayer, maybe leaning on others to yes. kind of feed us a little mm -hmm. bit, maybe break down a little right. bit of that, because that was so powerful, I think, for everybody to really grasp, am I in prayer going yeah. deep enough that I'm a kind of self-sustaining Christian, if that, yeah. if that makes sense? Absolutely. So whenever I researched in Exodus, and it kind of talked about Moses' relationship with the children of Israel and ch the children of Israel's relationship with God and all of this. And I break it down all in the message. But one of the things that it showed me is that the children of Israel didn't want a relationship with God. Yeah. So they put somebody else in that place because you're going to worship something, yeah. right? If it's not going to be God, it can yeah. be the messenger, it can be an yeah. evangelist, it can be whatever that is, or it could be whoever, a, a man-made thing, but it's not God, yeah. right? And he doesn't want us to do that. And so we're just kind of taking on that journey of how how do we not let that happen or how does that not really pan out? Well, I, t I gave the story about whenever I was younger, got into church, and I'm learning and I don't understand everything. Everything's so new. Yeah. But one of the things that I did wrong was I put somebody that was in leadership, sure. that messenger, I would call him, sure. um, in the place of God. Yeah. And so when that messenger kind of strayed away, yeah. I strayed away because I didn't have a relationship yeah. with God. And what that taught me then, and it's continued to teach me, is that I can't rely on somebody else to have a relationship of, with God for yeah. me. I have to have my own relationship with God. 100% submitted to my pastor, whatever he says goes, all of yeah. that. But it's not going to work well if I don't have a relationship yeah. with God. And I can't expect my pastor to have a relationship with God for me. Yeah. I have to have it on my own. And so whenever I was a young person, it just 
I didn't get that at first. And it kind of sent me spinning sure. and very vulnerable. It like, I went off the path, all the crazy stuff. I wish I would have learned that. I know we probably all have stories in our lives sure. that have taught us something. Thankful for the grace and the mercy of God that brought me back. Right. But it really taught me hard that I can't rely on people. I have to have a relationship with God. And even now, this new season of life that I'm in, I'll say, God's showing me so many different levels and new areas. And I hear his voice differently. And he's like downloading stuff faster than I can write and comprehend. And I wish I had somebody to tell me what all this meant. And one day I remember getting extremely frustrated. And I told God, I'm like, where's my mentor? You know, like I was just yeah. like, oh, and he kind of just whispered and said, why can't I be your mentor? Oh. Why wow. can't I teach you this? Wow. And I, I just broke Ooh. in prayer that day. Yeah. You know, I was just like, I'm sorry, Lord. Absolutely. Yeah. The scripture says that you are a great teacher. Yeah. The scripture says all of these things. Why wouldn't I want the yeah. master of all of this stuff to wow. teach me this? And so it kind of humbled me back down again to say, he's like, I've got you. If I'm going to teach yeah. you something, I'll, I'll reveal it to you. Wow. Wow. So. Oh, that's so good because, you know, we, we've kind of been talking about trying to grow and grow closer to God. And you're right. Absolutely. There are going to be ministers and, and people in our lives that help us. But I know we've probably all been guilty of getting where you're getting, where we get so connected to people, <clears throat> which again, there's it's a place so for that, yes, but you can't yes. put that in place mm -hmm. of talking to God. If mm -hmm. I'm spending more time on YouTube, listening to these great preaching videos, well, great. But am I doing that at the expense of actually connecting with God himself? Oh, that's so right. good. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm thankful that God God told me that and helped yeah. me on my journey to make sure that that wasn't an issue with my relationship as I move forward. But there's those little check-ins and stuff. But it just really got me when he says, yeah. well, why can't I teach you? Wow. I'm like, okay, yes, Lord, I will be your student. Every morning I will be there yeah. with my journal and you just tell me all the things. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So. Oh, that's powerful. Well, you know, one of the things I also think comes out of, of re-envisioning prayer yeah. and, and getting into that secret place is then – you know, you're talking about God is showing you things, prompting yes. you things, and all yes. this kind of thing. Well, some of that is for us to grow ourselves, but mm -hmm. then some of that is to turn our attention yeah. beyond yeah. our own needs. Definitely, I've been guilty of prayer was, I go to God with this stuff. It's like, yeah. you know, I got a cold. I need this financial <laughs> breakthrough. I need, you know, and I've yes. got my Let list. Let me give you my list. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just say, God bless my pastor. And then yeah. I did that, and I'm off I go. Right. But maybe talk to us about, like, like kind of getting – prayer in the right perspective so it's not just yeah. me about me yes. um what might that look like to look at prayer more than just me taking my needs to god right and so i think that prayer is so powerful and sometimes we're kind of like saying okay i'll just say the prayer or i'll just say something like there but i think it starts with understanding how powerful prayer yeah. is and how god loves us he cares for us right so he wants to hear our needs and hear the needs or the cares of our heart i yeah. would say you know and so as you go throughout life you connect with people you see you go to different countries yeah. and you see needs and all of that and it is heavy on your heart. Yeah. So then you're going to want to pray about those things. And yeah. he is dear to those, you know, yeah. that are like, so I would say that yes, prayer is a conversation with God, a relationship with God. It, it changes and molds you to who you are. It changes yeah. you to be more like him. So yeah. you have the same things that he cares for, that you care for and all yeah. of that. And then I think you'll see where as you dig in and as you talk to God more, yeah. you're able to share those things that that he cares about. So like when yeah. you pray for people, mm -hmm. when you pray for countries, when you pray for missionaries, when you pray for family members, yeah. anything outside of yourself that if this gets answered, it doesn't affect me other than I can just rejoice with that yeah. person, right? Yeah. And also I've found that, okay, like, Lord, how, how do I know how to pray? Like, who do I know I need to pray for? Or who do... You know, that kind of thing. And, and I know that as I go down a list or as I pray for people that are kind of like in my in my mind, I'll feel like this tug. It's almost yeah. like 
go fishing. Okay, yeah. I'm going to relate it to this, this country yeah. girl in me. Yeah. You cast it out there and it's just kind of bobbing and yeah. you're just like, okay, Lord, I ask that you touch this and person, yeah. this person, this person. And then as soon as you say one, it like a bite on the hook uh, and it just like goes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is where I need to stay for yep. a little bit. So then I just continue to pray for that person, yeah. that country, that situation or whatever. And then things just come to my mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, maybe it's a gift of knowledge. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But like, it's just, it, it just downloads and you're just praying for all these things. I didn't even yeah. know I needed to pray for this. Yeah. But it's God helping you yeah. do those prayers and say those prayers. And so I think that's been yeah. huge for me because it was so daunting to be like, how do I pray for others or how do I pray for other things? Yeah. But God will guide you. 100%. Yeah, yeah. The Spirit makes intercession. Yes. Yeah, so good. You know, and when I think about, you know, Jesus teaching the disciples to pray, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. But then right off the bat, let your kingdom come. Yes. So that idea of kingdom prayers, I think, is a lot what you're talking about, moving beyond just my things. I mean, my things, I mean, thankfully, he's merciful and he's going to take care of us. And he does care, obviously. But I I love that idea of of being sensitive to his voice and his prompting to move on beyond myself and then let him guide to where Mm -hmm. I need to spend some time and Mm -hmm. and intercede for needs and pray beyond myself. I love that. I love that. Talk to us a little bit because you you shared, you know, your passion for missions and places beyond, um, you know, my neighborhood. Um, Talk to us a little bit about, you know, praying for the world beyond our our neck of the woods. So I know that I've had great opportunities to travel the world, been to multiple countries, been in different cultures and I would even say like different ah, spiritual warfare situations in the country, you know, like strongholds, maybe that's feeling kind of strongholds. And I understand that going to the countries, you feel that a little bit more so you know how to pray, like, or you know what you need to do. But I can say, even if you've never been in a country, you can pray for missionaries and you can pray for countries, you can pray for leadership and all of that. So whenever I think about a country and I'm going to make up a name, you know, but if I'm going to pray for Timbuktu, which I think is a country, it's a, maybe a city, <laughs> but if I'm going to pray for that country, I might go and research and read about it a little bit just so I know the history sure. because historical situations can give way for strongholds, yeah. right? And so if I want to pray against that for that country, then I'll know how to specifically say they deal yeah. with um, racism or they deal sure. with poverty, like whatever it is that you can kind of pray against in that. And then I also pray that God draws the people unto him because that's what scripture says, right? Right. They come to him because he draws them. So uh, some access challenged nations, we can't go in with a megaphone and say, um, we're, you know, this is Jesus. This is, you know, hero is the Lord. Our God is one. And like start quoting scriptures because you're not going to be able to do that. But we can pray that the people of that country, maybe God, will you show them a vision? Will you show up in their dream? Will you draw them unto you for them to start asking questions and then be able to connect with other believers or be able to connect with somebody outside of that country that can help them, Mm -hmm. you know? So you can pray for that. You can pray for peace because when there is peace, you know, a lot of reconciliation reconciliation, a lot of things can happen. So those are some prayers that I would say that I pray for countries, missions, missionaries. Um, A lot of times they just say they they need comfort and peace. They're doing the work. They're so busy over there. And they're like, but sometimes we're so lonely too. So bring us friendships, bring us connections, pray. And so I pray for that. I pray that they don't get weary and well-doing, that they're able to connect with people, that they're able to feel fulfilled Mm -hmm. in their spirit and in their soul and in their body, like all that health, all that kind of stuff. So those are some of the things that you pray for. Absolutely pray for financial favor for them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are digging out work. Pray for people to go over there and help with them. Um, Laborers, Sure. And then also pray for infrastructure if they need that. Yeah. And then allow them to develop the people, disciple oh, the people yeah. on the ground. Because they can go over there and preach Acts 238, but they need people to help disciple people as well. So those are some of the things Excellent. missionary Excellent. you can pray for. So good. Well, I, I know that that is God's heartbeat for us to 
love like he loves. Yes. And so if we do that, if we're thinking of others, we're going to take them in prayer. Um, and then it's like you said, the power of prayer, what that can do. It's just, if we just stay in our human logic, you know, it can be like, what am I doing praying for, you know, this country? But we know prayer works. Yes, we really it do. Does. So it it's does. powerful. Now, let me ask you this. Um, we've talked about praying for the world and praying for nations beyond ourselves. You're an a on a pastoral staff in a local church now. So I'm going to bring it back down to us. <laughs> okay. So okay. talk to us about um, how then we can also pray for our, our local church, our yeah. pastor, our community, um, and our church. I know we have a, a passion and a vision to plant churches. So praying for co our communities or neighborhoods in our area that don't yet have a preaching point or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk to us a little bit too about, yes, we're going to pray for the world. Let's pray for our church and our neighborhoods. What would that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I would say from like a neighborhood standpoint, you can do, if you have time, maybe on your break, maybe you're a college student, you have a break between classes, whatever that is, but you can drive through your neighborhoods. You yeah. can drive the interstate and just be saying, God, call these people under you, draw them unto you, that they would want more, that they don't feel satisfied, that they don't feel fulfilled. We had a lady um, come and want to get baptized at the church last week. I think it was on an off day. She came yeah. up and she um, was raised Catholic mm -hmm. and she said, I just never felt fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Like I knew there was always something more. I 100% believe that that was God drawing her yeah. to scripture to find out more, yeah. to say, I need something more. And then that's how she got connected to the church. But could it have been because somebody was praying for that yeah. in her area, in her neighborhood? So don't ever discount your drive through prayers, all that kind of stuff. So you can pray through your neighborhoods and just ask God and also ask God to make divine appointments for you. Um, we are, might be the only Jesus that they see. And so ask God, be like, you know what, Lord, who are you drawing unto you? Who are you bringing? Who are you wanting us to connect with? And if I meet them at the grocery store, I'm going to tell them about yeah. you. You know, pray for those divine appointments or those opportunities for you to share who Jesus is with them. I would say that for the local assembly, I mean, you guys know your church, you know um, what they need, what they can I want to say improve on, but just enhance. I would sure. say say that word. I would I would pray for that. You know, like us. I know at the local level, you're our discipleship director at the sanctuary. So yeah. thankful to be able to work with you. But our passion is for people yeah. to grow, right? right? And so my prayer, if if this was me, I would say, okay, Lord, send us teachers, mm -hmm. send us Bible study teachers that want to disciple people. Yeah. And so send people or let them be hungry to be able to work in the work in the church and all of that. So I would pray for that. But then also that people are hungry that want to dig into that. And from a pastoral look at it, pray for your pastor. Yeah. You don't ever discount that either. It's it's so valuable. And you praying for protection of their mind, of their thoughts. There can be intrusive thoughts. There can be like they're attacked all the time because they're the ones shepherding the flock, right? And so the, the enemy knows that I can come against their mind or I can come against their health, whatever that is. But if you can pray protection over your pastor revelation, allow him to have this great relationship with God or whatever those needs are. And sometimes your pastors will tell you like, hey, I need you to pray for this about yeah. my family or whatever. Don't discount your prayers. God hears them. And as a as an administrative pastor, I'm so thankful when somebody texts me during the day and they're like, I prayed for you today. And I'm just like, oh, because I know that's so much more than me trying to dig stuff out. I know that yeah. God's listening to that. So oh, I love it. I love it. it. It's just so good and practical about these certain prayer points. And then I just connect that to what you said earlier. Yes, we're going to have some practical prayer points, but we're also going to, as we pray, be sensitive. And if God just all of a sudden puts something on us, mm -hmm. you know, it maybe it's somebody on the staff at the church that I don't pray for every yeah. day, but as I'm praying for the church, God pops that yes. image of that person mm -hmm. in my mind. And all of a sudden I'm praying for sister, somebody that I maybe didn't sit down to pray about, but yep. just being spirit led. Yeah. Absolutely. And even in, in services sometimes, yeah. like altar calls are going on and I'll be praying in the altar with people, but then I'll just kind of look up and I'll see somebody and God will, and it's weird because sometimes like he'll highlight them. Yeah. Like I'll just see him out of the entire crowd. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what they're going through, but sure. I'm going to either go pray for them or I'm going to take their name and pray for right. them when I, you know, talk to him in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, whatever that is. Yeah. But if God ever puts somebody on your heart and you're like, man, I've been thinking about this person a lot. Yeah. 
go pray for him. Right. Go pray for him. You never know. I promise nobody's going to reject prayers. Yeah. You yeah, know, even right. if there's nothing going on in their sure. life, maybe you're, you're seeding it for the future. It's so mm-hmm. important to just kind of follow after that and be spirit led whenever you're thinking about prayer. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I am really grateful for, for your sensitivity. Um, and just this this great mix, like I say, it just, there are some practical things we do, but then it's being spirit-led, yes. being willing to go to that secret place, mm-hmm. and then letting his spirit lead us to pray. Yes, he's going to take care of my needs, but I want to be also a blessing to him and the people he loves by praying beyond myself. Yes. It's so yes. good. So good. Yeah. Well, we've had a conversation about prayer. Yeah. Um, as we kind of wrap up, I guess I want to do two things. Okay. First... Why don't you maybe give some encouragement if there's somebody out there who they're listening today and maybe they're challenged because some of the things we've talked about, there's not something they really prayed for before. Maybe maybe um, somebody out there is watching or listening and you you got to be honest, say, ooh, prayer has kind of become something where I just take care of my stuff I'm worried about. What encouragement or instruction would you give yeah. them if they want to go ahead and kind of take advantage of some of these things that you're sharing? That's a great question. I want to say all the things that we've talked about today were never meant to make you feel smaller or that you weren't adequate. Um, but I hope that they inspired you to want to do more. Yeah. And more can be two minutes. More yeah. can be three minutes. Increments. I know that the, we have young fam- young moms out there, young families, maybe a you know, college student that has five jobs and they're taking 18 credit hours and stuff. And I understand that your schedule is crazy, but anything that you do extra, you can build on. So maybe if now it is a list to you and it takes you five minutes to go through your list, maybe add on three minutes at the end of that, just so you sit and listen to hear what God has to say. It's just three minutes or maybe on your drive to work or school or wherever you're headed to, you take that time to turn the radio off um, and just kind of pray and listen to what God has to say. Anything you can fill in, just little things. And any little thing is a big thing. So Mm -hmm. you'll just continue to build on that. And I know it's going to be so worth it. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, then the second thing I want to do, we've had this great conversation about prayer. Would you close us out by praying for those who are watching and listening that God would help us put this into practice in our lives? Absolutely. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about kingdom things. And I thank you that every time that we call on your name, that you will meet us there. You have promised that you would be there, Lord. So every person that's listening to this podcast and they have made a commitment that they want to dive deeper into prayer and maybe find that secret place with you, Lord, I ask that you bless that time together with them. Lord, I ask that you bless the person that's listening today, encourage them, inspire them to go deeper in you, Lord. And I thank you so much for all of your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being part today. I really believe this is going to be a blessing to people. Yes. It was a great joy and honor to be here with you today. Well, thanks so much. You guys join us for a future episode. God bless you this week. Mm